Hey, it's Pete from PMG Auto Care here. Today's video is all about this awesome Volkswagen Golf R32. The Mark V R32 Golf comes from an era where cars really were at their peak in my opinion. They were modern enough that you can use them, enjoy them, have all of the creature comforts that make life easy, but yet they're still analog and mechanical and means that as a driver you still get that feedback and enjoyment that really in the very most modern cars now is somewhat missing. But they also had really interesting engines. That's the engine, that 3.2 that is the heart of the R32 that makes them so special. The noise is just iconic. If you're a car guy, I can guarantee you could blindfold you, listen to one of those drive past, and you would say exactly what car it was. The noise is just something else. Now this one, it's probably the most ideal spec in an R32, given that it is the deep blue pearl metallic. It's a three door. It has those lovely Recaro wing back seats, and it's also a manual. Now this one's coming up on 100,000 miles and it's a little grubby and dirty and a bit tired looking but that's what it's here for. We're going to see what we can do with it, transform it. We won't really know exactly what sort of shape it's in until it's washed. There's a lot of algae and green built up in the car. I'm predicting there might be a fairly heavy amount of decontamination needed but once we start into getting that loose layer of grime off the car we'll know better then. Let's get out into the wash bay, get that started and we'll see where we go from there. wash all complete in the R32. And what I did get a pleasant surprise with is whenever it came to the mechanical washing of the car with the mitts and stuff, I was expecting the paint to be really baked in with ground in contamination. It actually feels pretty slick to the touch, so that would suggest that the car has been enthusiastically maintained for a while. I would say it's been you know, hand polished, hand waxed, things like that. But then it's obviously lay outside for a while and that's allowed the algae and and all the greenery and stuff to grow on the car and it just hadn't been washed for a while but it's back to squeaky clean again now 
What I'm not surprised about and what isn't pleasant is the condition of the paintwork. Now, it's a pretty old car at this point. It's going to have been through its fair share of the wars. And that's exactly what we're here to do anyway, is get this thing back to looking as good as it possibly can. Now, Deep Blue Purr is a fantastically glossy colour. As you'll see in those wash shots sitting out in the wash bay, it's already looked pretty glossy out there in that low-level sun. But there's so much more potential for this, and it should look dripping wet whenever it's finished. But now we need to decide exactly what we're going to do with it. Let's pop the camera off and show you the condition it's in and how we come to that decision. So starting with this bonnet, as you can see, no shortage of swirl marks, light scratches, probably some deeper ones hiding underneath all that, and then a fine peppering of small stone chips along the front of it, which we're going to have to deal with. Otherwise, they are actually going to look even worse after the paint is cracked out. They're going to stand out even further. But as you can see, there's still definitely loads to do there. The headlights are looking a bit dull and delaminated and stuff as well. So we're going to have to fix those. No big deal. And then onto the wings and the sides of the car. Some really, really heavy defects all along this edge, which may or may not fix it looks like this wing has been refinished it definitely has been refinished so we need to take that into consideration it's the thing there's a limit with what we can do here with older stuff again the sides showing just how swirly it is some deep scratch in there i spot it some deep scratch in there i actually noticed up high on the car up along this pillar but I can't decide if that is some old touch-in paint, which is exactly what I think that is. It's just been laid on. It's probably had a scratch and somebody has just touched that in. So we need to get remove that. So we'll just wipe that out, see what's underneath it, and start again. Again, the roof swirly. You're getting the picture. The car is very, very swirly. And I say Deep Blue Pearl is a very glossy color when you see it sitting like that. In fact, the squeaky clean now will be helping that too. But wait do you see the difference whenever it's prepped right. Some work to do with these teal pipes and stuff. And just, it's kind of in the same sort of general condition all over. See more deeper scratches towards the back there. I'm going to say straight up now that we're definitely going to be in for some nasty shocks and surprises as we go along. Now we need to figure out what we're going to use. So you can see we definitely, definitely have our work cut out for us in this one. There's just nothing else for it. We're just going to be extremely aggressive. Now, the bits of the cars that have been refinished, we just have to take them as it comes. But for the vast majority of the car, we know exactly what we're jumping into here. Old school, proper hard German paint. And that's how we're going to attack this. Microfiber pads. McGuire's 105, maybe a bit, little bit of D300 mixed in along just to give it a little bit longer of a work time. But it's just going to be a case of dig, dig, dig. It's going to be several, several sets at each part of this car. It's going to be time consuming, but it's going to be worth it at the end of the day. And then we're going to lay down some protection on the car. And then lastly, interior, engine bay t heel, all those little things that just tie the car together. It's going to be a total transformation in this one. So let's get started and see what we're in for.
heavy correction stage in this car. I'm kind of disheartened. This is where it sucks to be a detailer, to be a, in the pursuit of perfection. It's rarely possible that we get a car to perfect, but I all want to push them beyond what we've got with this. Now, what we have got is probably about an 80% defect removal, which given the state of the car before we start it into it, is pretty high, but it's hard to draw that line. The truth is there's a lot of marks in this car just are beyond repair, and certainly chasing them to flatten them down another, what, 10% to take the edge out of them, it's only detrimental to the paint long term in terms of removing a lot of clear coat off the car for no real long term gain. So this is where we turn it around and focus on finish. That's what's going to rescue this job and is what's really going to give that car that jaw drop and finish out in every other light and circumstance. Fact of the matter is, if I brought this car out into the daylight and start to show you around the defects that I'm not happy with, you would probably look at me like I was mental. But it's that mindset that makes us good at what we do. And all in all, the car does look great. It's a huge, huge transformation from what we started with. I need to keep that in mind. That's where it's really hard to draw the line, where I could have maybe spent hours and hours more on the heavy correction stages of this car, which, in all told, there's 12 hours so far in, so it's not like we haven't spent the time. But if I had to spent even more time and round out some of those deeper defects a little bit more, we definitely wouldn't have removed them. But if we'd have got them to the point where they were a little improved, we would have sacrificed so much healthy clear coat off the car in what really would have been a fool's game. So now we're going to really focus on the refining. I'm going to go in with a, a heavier end of the refining polish. I'm going to go in with the Kosh Kimi fine cut. And I'm going to spend time with a black pad and just really break that finish down. It's going to add that gloss, deep blue pearl, really glossy color naturally. But when you spend the time on really sharpening up the finish like this, it's where you get that jaw drop and finish. So while it might sound a bit disheartening, I know come the end of this job, we're still going to have a really unbelievable looking car. Let's get stuck in the refinement, see if we can put a smile back in my face. Tell me what can I do now? I'm a little happier now that the refining process is finished on the car, certainly added the deep in that deep blue pearl. And while, yes, there are still paint defects there that are just beyond saving, spending time on that refining process has just sharpened up the car so much and added so much more depth and clarity. It's really brought the metallic finish to life. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it looks now. Now we need to protect it, so we're going to lay down some crystal serum ultra on this. We're going to be putting glass coatings on. The wheels need refurbished in this car. They're going to get refurbished at some point, so we're not protecting those. We'll probably give them a little wipe to see too when we're dressing the tires, just to protect them a little, make them a little easier cleaned in the interim. And then we've the interior to do, engine bay to do, and then that's this car wrapped up. Looking forward to getting out in the natural light. I think that's when I'm going to be really happy with the car. When I see it sitting outside, I know the gloss is going to be absolutely insane. If a car looks good in here, it always looks a hundred times better outside in the natural light. Let's get that wrapped up and then we can show you guys it all finished.
So that's the R32 all buttoned up. Have to say, now it's complete. I'm pretty happy with it. But I'll let you guys be the judge. Time to show you it finished. I wasn't joking when I said about that dripping wet finish in the natural daylight. Deep blue pearl is an awesome colour for that. It really lends itself to those really deep glossy finishes. And then whenever you polish it properly like that, it just brings that to a whole different level. The car looks awesome outside. And whenever we have it in here under the intense lighting, it still looks really good. This is one of the frustrating things about being a detailer though. You want every car to be as close to perfection as you can get it. But ultimately we are at the mercy of how good is the car to begin with, how much potential is there. And that's the one thing I can say, we took it to 100% of its potential, but there's certain areas in the car that just need painted. Now the owner was aware of that going into this, and really it's gonna give him scope now that he can look, look around the car and say, I think I'll paint this and I won't paint those bits and pieces now. Where before, whenever you've seen the car it's before state, it would have been quite hard to know where to draw the line. And maybe you would have painted some things that didn't need painted, or now maybe they'll, they'll paint some things to think it's worth putting the investment in and getting this car to absolute perfection. That's just something that the owner will have to make a call on. Can't wait to see his reaction to the car. It is such a drastic transformation from the car that was dropped in to the one that's going to be leaving. And well, if he does decide to paint anything, we can just polish and recoat those areas. It's not a big deal if and when he decides to do that. But hey, maybe you just want to drive and enjoy and use the car. And that's what we're all about. One of our models is cleanse, revive, protect and drive. So getting cars out, driving, using and enjoying them is what we're all about. With that, we draw another video to a close. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps keep our motivation up more than anything else. And we'll catch you in another one. Next video is going to be something a bit different than we've done anything else on the channel with a bit of a, a departure from our usual type of vehicle. But I think it's going to make for an interesting one. I'll be out in a week's time, so catch it then. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.